Hey guys, welcome to my channel. It's Nicole from Dogo Argentino USA. Today we are going to talk about one of my favorite subjects and that is toys that are appropriate for a new Dogo Argentino, specifically puppies. But you can find this video useful if you have adults as well. So we're going to talk about some of the important factor in choosing puppy toys, which maybe you've never thought about before, but there are several things to consider. One of the first topics that you've got to consider is to make sure that you're making smart toy choices. In other words, you don't want to make a choice that's going to be dangerous or possibly even deadly to your Dogo Argentino puppy. So for that reason, you have to make sure that both the materials and the size are appropriate. And some toys can only be given to your dog while you're actively supervising them. And they shouldn't be things that are left alone with the dog. In terms of making smart choices, one of the other things that I think is really important is to make sure that you are choosing toys that aren't going to lead to bad behavior later. So imagine you've got your new Dogo Argentino puppy home, you're super stoked, and you're like, oh, I forgot to go to PetSmart or Petco or Amazon. I don't have any toys. What can I give them? And you look around your house and you find an old worn out pair of sneakers and you're like, well, my puppy can chew on this until I get to the store and you give him a sneaker. Now, the problem with giving a sneaker that's old and worn out are chances are that puppy is learning that sneakers are what it's supposed to play with and what it's supposed to chew on. And later on, you have a pair of very expensive high-end designer sneakers that also are super attractive to your puppy because you've given them the signal that this is an okay thing to chew on. So in terms of making smart choices, you wanna make sure you're not giving your dog materials that are worn out and then you're upset later that he chooses a brand new version of that. I think that one of the things that can be important in terms of materials are like things that are made out of terry cloth and there's a lot of dog toys that are made out of terry cloth. The problem is that oftentimes bathrobes are made out of terry cloth or towels are made out of terry cloth. And if you've taught him this material is cool when it's in the shape of a dog bone, but it's not cool if you're actually wearing the product, you're confusing the dog because you're telling them this material is okay to chew and if they like the sensation in between their teeth they're like okay why are you upset it's, it's just a bigger version of what you gave me so make smart choices make sure you're not introducing something inadvertently that's later going to cause you to be upset so shoes leather goods terry cloth if these are things that you have in your wardrobe that you don't want your dog to chew on then don't give the dog those things so that it's always a hard no if they pick up a toy or they pick up something and treat it like a toy that isn't. You have to choose the appropriate size. Generally speaking, and there are exceptions of course, but generally speaking, a Dogo Argentino puppy wants a toy that it can actually fit inside its mouth and carry around. If the toy is so big or so heavy that they can't pick it up, chances are good they're not going to play with it much. So as they grow, you may need to switch out their toys as their mouths become bigger and their jaws become stronger. And what might be appropriate for an eight week old puppy is probably not going to be appropriate for a two year old dog. And when you are choosing toys that it's not like you get to buy one set forever and that's all they wrote. Because size does matter, at least in toys. You would like to rotate your toys in order to keep them new and fresh for the dog. So I keep a basket on top of my refrigerator and toys that are not currently available for chewing are in that basket. So I like to have maybe five to 10 toys. Now I'm a little crazy with toys, but five to 10 toys that they're actively allowed to play with. And the other five or 10 toys are actually up in that basket and I rotate them would say about every week or so or as toys get damaged and need to be thrown away then a new toy will come out of the basket believe me they know the basket on top of the refrigerator they're like oh 
of the magic basket. Um, and they only get those toys occasionally. They get to play with them for a little while and then I take them away so that it's keeping that sense of novelty and freshness. It's not like, oh, that's the same bone that's been there six months, I'm done with it. You know, dogs that are intelligent, like the Dogo Argentino, need stimulation and rotating their toys is just one of the many ways you can provide that for them. Puzzle toys. So intelligent breeds like the Dogo Argentino generally like puzzle toys. And puzzle toys are designed specifically so that the dog has to solve a problem in order to get a treat. So the only issue with puzzle toys is you wanna make sure that the problem that they have to solve is A, solvable, and B, is not going to cause any uh, physical harm to the dog. So you don't wanna create a, a puzzle toy that the dog can't solve because that creates frustration and unsatisfied frustration can lead to destruction, aggression, unsatisfied drive is not a good thing in a Dogo Argentino. So you want to make sure that the puzzle is something that's solvable. They do have specific dog toys that are designed for the dog to be able to figure out how to get a treat from, usually it's a, a treat based toy where you put the treats on the inside and the dog figures out, oh, if I rotate it a certain way, a treat comes out. So those are great toys for dogs that are intelligent because they have to solve a problem in order to get the reward. And in behavior training, rewards that are intermittent are always more effective than getting constant reward every time you do the action. They find that intermittent rewards actually tend to make the behavior much stronger because they, are, they never know, oh, am I going to get a treat this time? Or maybe next time I don't, and then I get a treat, treat, and then no treat. They find that creates much more drive to figure out the puzzle. There are a few things right off the bat that I want you to avoid because they are toxic and can cause huge, huge problems in dogs. I think that you need to know that rawhide is responsible for many, many, many very expensive surgeries and ultimately many toy-based deaths. What happens a lot of times is they will chew part of it, like if it's a bone that has those two knots on the end, they'll chew part of it and swallow it and it will create either a stomach or intestinal blockage and they'll die. They can also get it caught in their throat. If they are nervous about other people taking the toy away and they're trying to toy guard by swallowing it real quick, you can get choking and, and things like that. So rawhides can be quite dangerous in that way. And so I don't recommend them. Toys that have Kevlar in them. A lot of times you'll see toys where it's like, oh, Kevlar based for extra chewing toughness. Kevlar can unravel and create blockages in dogs. Kevlar itself is quite toxic to dogs. So you have to make sure that the toy doesn't say Kevlar-like as opposed to Kevlar, because if it's Kevlar straight up, do not give it to your Dogo Argentino puppy. It's gonna cause a problem. There are some toys that I think are okay, but only with heavy supervision. And one of those toys would be rope toys. Rope toys are a toy that you can play with as long as you are actively supervising the dog. The minute the dog leaves your site, you gotta go retrieve that rope toy because rope toys have a lot of danger to them in some ways. They can get a toe stuck in it and then there's all sorts of mayhem that can ensue if one of their toes or claws gets embedded in the rope itself. They can try to swallow it and it's 100% going to kill them because it will create a blockage. They won't be able to pass it or it's going to create an $8,000 surgery for you to have the vet go in and get that toy out of their system. So I think rope tug toys and things like that, they're okay if you're supervising them. But if you're not supervising them, they should not have access to those toys. Another thing that rope toys and actually tug toys in general can have a negative to if it's a fabric-based toy like rope, God forbid, they can actually pull one another's teeth out. If one dog has its tooth stuck in the fibers of the rope and the other Dogo Argentino comes up and pulls that rope, they're strong enough to dislodge teeth under the right circumstances. So again, this is a toy that I think is should be used with moderation and I think should only be used under super, super heavy, heavy observation.
So let's dive in. I'm going to break up toys that are recommended into two categories, natural and man-made. If you want your dog to only look at toys that are natural, which I think is a great way to go, but certainly not the only way to go. Um, you're looking at things that are gonna be created in nature. There should be more of an attraction to them because they're natural products. The negative to you as a person is that almost all nature-based products do contain a risk of bacteria contamination like E. coli or salmonella. So if you are giving some of these natural items, you just want to be aware that if you touch them, you should wash your hands. So let's talk about number one, antlers. Antlers are awesome, long-lasting toys, even for heavy chewers. I bought an elk antler, a very long one that was about this big and had like six tines and gave it to my Dogo Argentinos and they've had that toy over two years now. And they have definitely chewed on it and chewed on it repeatedly so that it doesn't have as many tines as it used to because they're trying to get to the center of the uh, antler, but they're very long lasting. They are expensive, but I think they're worth it because they're so long lasting and they're attractive to the dog because it's a natural product. Uh, antlers are great for that. And there's elk antlers, there's deer antlers, there's lots of different antler type toys. Number two, for natural materials, if you're looking for something that's long lasting and good for the dog, you could look at yak sticks, which is a type of dehydrated desiccated cheese. They won't last forever, they'll eventually get through them, but they do last a really, really, really long time, at least for my Doco Argentinos. I get the jumbo size, they're about this big and about that big in diameter, and they last quite a while. I like the larger size because I want my dog to work at it over and over and over. The smaller size that they have are much less expensive, but they don't last as long. They're easier for the dog to break up because they do have such tremendous bite strength. But I personally really, really like yak sticks. They're natural. They're attractive to the dog. I've had them out in the rain. I've had them indoors. And just a little tip for yak sticks. Once they get down to like three, four inches, um, sometimes the dogs can't hold them because they can't put their paws on top of it and have enough standing out you can actually put it in the microwave with a little bit of water and zap it on high for about 30 seconds and it will uh, absorb the water and puff up and be bigger for the dog to get a hold of. Or you can simply throw it out at that point because you don't want your dog to reach a point where the toy is a choking hazard. Hooves, dogs love a hoof. So you can get all sorts of hooves, generally cow hooves, but there's also goat hooves and other types of hoof products. And those are great. They're good chewing action. They're natural. Um, they do take quite a while to get through, but dogs generally love a hoof, so hooves are great. Weight-bearing bones. So I love a weight-bearing bone. That would be bones like the femur of the leg of a cow or a buffalo, um, an elk, any, any, you know, hooved animal that is a game animal is going to have a really nice size femur. A lot of times you can get them pretty cheap from the butcher. I like that. I think they're great. Now, I actually give bones quite regularly to my dogs. Now, the one thing I want to say about bones is sometimes in the pet store, you will see bones that they're trying to sell and those bones are boiled. There is a benefit to the boiling in that they're hopefully killing off any bacteria like salmonella or E. coli by the boiling. But the negative is that cooked bones become brittle and brittle bones are incredibly deadly to dogs because they splinter rather than flex. So you could give a, a raw bone to a dog and have no concern that if the dog swallowed the bone that it couldn't dissolve it. So for example, I frequently feed chicken quarters to my dogs raw and I feed them bones and all, and I'm not worried at all because the bones are so flexible when they're uncooked, it's, it's just not a big deal. I mean, dogs in the wild have developed very, very acidic stomachs and they dissolve that in their stomach, so it's, it's really not a, a big concern. Cooked bones, on the other hand, are absolute no-go. I do not give my dogs cooked bones of any type. And if you were thinking about giving a cooked bone, like let's say you had a T-bone steak and you were gonna give it to your dog, the bone, after you ate it, I would caution you not to for two reasons. One, cooked bone splinter, as we've mentioned, but two, cooked bones 
and bones of that nature are going to have been cut on a bandsaw, which is going to create these incredibly very sharp edges. And generally speaking, bandsaw cooked items with the extension, with the exception of large femur bones are just not a good way to go because they are going to uh, cause mouth irritation, lip irritation, and of course they can be quite dangerous if swallowed. So I can say honestly that I did not stick to only natural toys when I started giving my dogs toys and so now they have a taste for natural and man-made toys. That was a mistake on my part in my opinion. I think I should have just stuck with the natural. Let's talk about some of the man-made toys. These are things that you're going to find places like Amazon and PetSmart and Petco and those types of, of retail outlets. So one of the things that you can give to a dog that I think is a great toy is going to be actual hard rubber toys. And there are several different brands of very, very hard rubber toys that are designed specifically for dogs that are aggressive chewers. These are going to be made by brands like Kong. They're going to be made by brands like Go Nuts. They're going to be made by brands like Bully Make. And all it is is an extremely hard rubber product that the reason they're indestructible is because they're very, very hard for the dog to break up. Now, Go Nuts has a really nice feature in their toys. Their toys are not the most exciting toys. They're kind of plain, but they're great in terms of long lasting effect and they have a special feature which I appreciate. On the inside of the toy is actually a, a less dense rubber. So if you've got a rubber stick on the inside is a less dense rubber and there's a more dense rubber on the outside and the inside is red. So if you see that red you need to take the toy away from the dog immediately and they will actually replace the toy if the dog gets to that red center. So it kind of makes up for the fact that GoNut toys are quite expensive, but it's a good brand. In addition to GoNuts, Kong, and Bully Make, there's a couple hard balls that are more or less indestructible and they can be super fun to give to your dog. One of them would be Monster Canine. Great ball. I have several of them. They're great. They're long lasting. They are fun to play with. And I also have Jolly Pet balls. Now these balls are are virtually indestructible. My dogs have never destroyed one, although they have tried. Now, I don't know that this, that either of those companies have started out with the idea that they were dog toys, and I think that's why their choice of material is so indestructible. I actually think that the Jolly Pet was started as a farm animal toy, like a horse toy, and so it wasn't really so much meant to be bitten as it is to be kicked. So. I have both a monster canine and a jolly pet, and probably more than one, but I know I at least have one of each. And they play soccer more or less with them. They can't stretch their mouths because the balls are, are more like this in size. So they can't get them in their mouths, but they, they do play soccer with them all the time. They love them. They think they're great. So those are some indestructible toys that you can give your dog that regardless of bite strength, it can't bite something that's essentially it's not quite the size of, it's not quite the size of a ball that you would use in dodgeball, but it's pretty close. It's too big to bite. Now you can use actual sports balls and a lot of people do. So that would be things like soccer balls, basketballs, footballs. Um, if you're getting a decent one, those actually last quite a long time, at least with my dogs. I had a soccer ball that was a good quality soccer ball that lasted about two years before they finally got a hold of it and popped it. Now, Dogos can 100% pop a soccer ball, a basketball, any of those types of balls, but it takes them a while to get to it for my dogs, at least. You can add those, those are fun. And there is something to be said for allowing a certain amount of destruction in your toys with your dogs because they get to finally satisfy that urge if they're like, I'm going to kill this toy, I'm going to bite this toy, and they never get to it. That's a little bit of an unsatisfied urge. Getting to destroy things once in a while I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. You can always get bones that are made from the Nylobone company, which is essentially plastic. 
they're very difficult to destroy. They do destroy them over time. I think the con is that you have to assume on some level your dog is chewing plastic and therefore ingesting plastic. Now, that's what I was saying about the natural stuff. I wish I had only stayed with natural goods. Now, I've never had a problem with Nyla bones. I've never had a blockage with Nyla bones, but there are some anecdotal cases of dogs that have swallowed Nyla bones and needed to have an operation. So it's, it's something to bear in mind. You need to make that choice for your own family. I just want you to be aware that occasionally the Nyla bone story goes very, very wrong. I have heard that some people like to give actual tires to dogs because the tire rubber is quite hard. So every once in a while, I will see a tire on a chain hooked to a tree and, and that's not for the kids, it's for the dog. And they'll chew at it and play with it and it takes them quite a long time to get through that. So that is a more long lasting toy. Again, it's a man-made toy and you have to make the decision as to whether you're comfortable with your Dogo Argentino having access to that, but it's out there, it's something you can do. I think there's something to be said for man-made, what I would call treat stuffer toys. Like Kong is a very famous brand that starts out with a treat stuffer toy, which looks a little bit like a football shape only with ribs and it's hollow on the inside and you can stick treats in it and then put it in the freezer to freeze that treat and it therefore becomes more enticing to the dog. So a lot of people will stuff them with peanut butter, some people will stuff them with cream cheese, some people will put some sort of other type of mixture in, freeze it and give it to the dog. There's lots of different brands. Kong is not the only one that makes a treat stuffing toy. And to me, the thing about a treat stuffing toy is their shapes are interesting. So when you throw them, they kind of bounce in unpredictable ways, which is fun. But the main attraction, let's be honest, is hey, here's a treat that is going to take me, you know, a little while to get out and I'm going to lick and chew and lick and chew. And it gives them some stimulation and it gives them the positive reinforcement of the flavor based on what it is that you're putting inside it. I like to use treat stuffer toys occasionally. I don't use them all the time, but occasionally they can be fun. And I, I personally, the way I deploy them is I like to give them a frozen treat stuffer toy if I'm going to be away for any length of time in the evening. I am at home when I'm not at work 99% of the time. So, and you know, if my dogs are gonna be alone, I'll give them a little something extra to work on. I'll be like, here you go. One of the things that I like to give them, they are not in any way long lasting for my dogs, but they are for some dogs, are bully sticks, which are pizzles, which if you don't know, that's a bull penis. I get the 12 inch variety that is the jumbo extra thick. And by jumbo extra thick, it's like the diameter of my thumb roughly. They're terribly expensive. I buy them in bulk. I can honestly say that I spend, my dogs have a bully stick habit. They get a bully stick, each of them, every other day minimal. And so I end up being in the fortunate position to be able to afford buying $300 worth of bully sticks a month, and I do, and they love them. But you might wanna try a bully stick if you find that you can afford it, it is a natural treat. My dogs go through them, depending on the dog, anywhere between 20 and 30 minutes. I have had some people say their dogs can take, you know, two hours and still not make it through. It depends on the dog, it depends on the motivation, but that's definitely a treat that is frequently contaminated. They're usually harvested, the ones that I buy in Argentina, so they don't use as many chemicals as say the ones that are produced in China. I feel a little better about that because the beef industry in Argentina is quite different than the beef industry in China. I prefer to get my beef products or my animal products from Argentina if possible, or the United States because we have a little bit stricter standards in terms of the chemicals and stuff that we use. So bully sticks are great. They're not super long lasting. They are natural, but I will give you the warning that there are occasions where certain dogs have either swallowed and choked and again have the intestinal blockage process or problem and some dogs can actually choke on them. I have never had that problem with my dogs. My dogs destroy them and they probably get to literally about two and a half inches long before they finally swallow it. And have I've, I've personally never had a problem, but I've 
seen stories on the internet where different dog owners did have a problem. I would say that that is one of those toys that you should try to give when you're supervising the dog. Definitely. Because you'll know at that point. And I do know there's at least one product on the internet that's meant to be like, I guess, sort of like a pacifier type item. You stick the short bully stick into it and the dog can't swallow it basically because the the rubber casing is attached to it, you know, and all they could get at most is maybe this big and it's not so much of a choking hazard. Now, I also give one other toy, but I will let you know that it is not long lasting. I regret giving them, but my dogs love them and I do give toys that are made from a fabric material. They can destroy it literally in 10 to 15 minutes, if that and they're shaped like little dinosaurs and they're super cute and they destroy them and they get new ones all the time. They are messy because they pull the fluff out. I'm sure if you've seen any of my videos, you've seen my dog surrounded by fluff. Any kind of stuffed fabric toy, my dogs will just decimate and I let them do it. I It actually makes me happy. It makes them happy. They're like, you know, this toy, or I don't like this toy. I'm going to kill it and I'm fine with that but it is something that I, A, I supervise and B, I know is not going to last. I would like to talk just very briefly about squeaky toys. Squeaky toys are attracted to dogs because of the squeak. Now, why is the squeak attractive? Because it mimics the horrible sounds of a tiny prey animal dying. So if your dog is attracted to squeaky, they're, what they're really attracted to, genetically speaking, is the cries of a prey animal that they've caught, like a rabbit, squeaking its last squeak before they eat it. So... Squeaky toys have a little bellow inside them that's plastic and it varies in size and shape, but it is it is plastic. Uh, they can pull it out, they can choke on it, they can swallow it, they can destroy it. So squeaky toys, like I said, I regret starting down the squeaky toy path because they're fabric and because they're messy and because they're not natural, and because, but they do really like them. So I do watch them with supervision. They do get them, they destroy them, and I clean them up and give them more. It is something you can do, and there's certainly lots of different squeaky toys, but I would not call them durable or long-lasting or dogo-proof in any way, including the ones that claim to be super durable, like Tuffy Bone and similar types of toys. I think Gorilla Bone is another one of them. They are not durable at all. As a matter of fact, my dogs have gotten them so many times over the years, they know to like put their little teeth around the external edge. Let's take Tuffy Bone as an example. They'll find the spot that the blanket stitch, the edging is sewn together and they'll just rip it off and they do that within literally a minute and then start ripping out the guts. But they like it and you know, I'm willing to go down that path. You might not want to because I do have a budget specifically for that type of toy they like it, they enjoy the satisfaction, but I take them away and they destroy a new one and they get more than they should because my dogs are super spoiled. They probably get, reasonably, they're probably getting five or six of those, well, six. They're probably getting six of those types of toys a month and, and the toy cost is anywhere from eight to $20, depending on who is giving them the toy. So, you can start down that road, but it is expensive. It is expensive. And ultimately you can have transfer of, hey, well, if I can have this toy, then I can have that. So I have had one or two occasions where I had a toy that was just a little bit too similar to a blanket I had. And they're like, oh, is this also available for you? I'm like, no. Now my dogs are super obedient. And as soon as I give them the command, they stop but they wouldn't have even had that in their mind had I not started down the road of fluffy stuffed animal type toys. Now, if you guys know something I haven't mentioned, I'm gonna mention some of the top brands for tough man-made types of toys. There's Go Nuts, which is G-O-U-G-H-N-U-T-S. There's Monster Canine the letter K. There's Bully Make, M-A-K-E. There's Kong, and there's a million kind of Kong imitators. Like Arm & Hammer creates a series of tough rubber toys, which are also meant to be dental cleaners. There's Jolly Pet. You know, there's just endless amounts. So 
I personally, if I had a new puppy, I would want to get a variety of materials because you don't know, not knowing that dog, what its satisfaction is going to be with a specific material. I personally, like I said, I wish in retrospect I had gone down the natural path and only given them natural things, but I didn't. And so they have toys of all types, but it's something that you should think about before your puppy comes home. Or if you have an adult, let's say you have a rescue and you don't know too much about that dog, you know, make sure that you've got a variety of things to try. As always, I hope you liked this video. Please like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications every time I put a new video. And if you know of a durable toy, please, for God's sakes, tell me below in a comment because I am always on the hunt for super durable toys. Have a dogotastic day, guys.